Hey, what's going on everybody? So I've been using the Steam Deck OLED for a couple months now, and I've got to say that this is one fascinating piece of hardware. I absolutely love the Steam Deck OLED in comparison to the original Steam Deck. The RAM is faster, the hardware is more optimized, and it seems like Steam OS is a completely different experience than it was in the past. Sure, Emu Deck is still a piece of crap, and I've reached out to them specifically and insulted them personally. But besides Emu Deck, the Steam Deck OLED is absolutely incredible, and playing games like Marvel Spider-Man 2 has never been so sweet, especially when it comes to convenience and not having to worry about any crashes happening. Of course, the game runs a little slow at 30 to 35 FPS while exploring the open world, but for me, I haven't seen any hard crashes happen in this game. I have seen soft hangs when it has come to certain checkpoints in this game. Like the opening scene with Sandman, there seems to be a soft hang with a specific QTE section while trying to finish off that boss. But besides just reloading a checkpoint, this game seems to be running almost perfect on the Steam Deck OLED. And a lot of people have been having trouble and have also been testing this game frequently after every single update. But I think the latest update to this game has made it stable enough to justify buying this game specifically for the Steam Deck OLED. And I'm running it with HDR enabled, but I'm gonna share with you exactly my perfect settings for Marvel Spider-Man 2 on the Steam Deck OLED that I found after hours and hours and days of research. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is download Proton GE 9-25. And the way I did that, I simply went into my web browser, downloaded Decky Loader, and then downloaded Wine Cellar. And in Wine Cellar, you can actually just go to the Proton version that you want and download it there. And once it's downloaded, it's going to require a restart. And after restarting the Steam Deck OLED, go back into properties, go to your launch settings and type in mango HUD equals one space game mode run space percent sign command percent sign. This is going to enable the game to basically follow the rules of game mode suspend and sleep functions. So that means that similar to how I had this game running on Steam OS on the Legion Go, after you put the game to sleep, most likely it will crash, but these settings prevent it from hanging or crashing, the worst hanging you're going to get is during certain checkpoints where the game just goes in this infinite loop and you're going to have to probably restart the checkpoint more than once. And that's the only unfortunate thing you're going to run into. I've run into these kind of issues with PSP and PS Vita ports, so this is nothing new for handheld devices that are using slow speed memory cards like SD cards. But the next thing you're going to want to make sure you do is install this game specifically in your internal storage. The SSD speeds are going to prove beneficial for Marvel Spider-Man 2 with all those ridiculous fast loading scenes like the teleporting black cat scene. That scene has made this game hang, but it hasn't crashed the game like I expected it to. Especially the beginning where Sandman punches you away from the city and you literally go to another neighborhood in about two seconds. This game has very fast loading times and the internal SSD is going to help. Now the next thing you're going to have to do and what helped me is Marvel Spider-Man 2 has a lot of issues when it comes to the VRAM and so you're going to need to change your VRAM buffer to four gigabytes in order to play Marvel Spider-Man without any crashes and I think that out of any of the steps this helped the most. Now what you're going to need to do is hold the plus volume button, press power and go into your BIOS menu. After that go into setup utility, advanced and down here where it says UMA frame buffer size, switch it to four gigs, exit the utility settings, press continue, and your VRAM for your Steam Deck will be set to four gigabytes. And the last thing that I'm going to show you are my specific graphic settings for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Now the first settings you're going to need to focus on are the Steam Deck settings themselves for this game. You're going to need to set the frame limit to 60 FPS or 60 Hertz, allow tearing. Usually people set the manual GPU clock to 1600p, but just set this off because it's going to mess with the audio in some instances. This tends to make the audio crackle for about 20 20 minutes straight. So setting this off will help with those audio issues. And everything else is set to default. The last settings we're going to need to set are the in-game graphic settings. In the display window, set the window mode to exclusive full screen, the resolution to 800p, aspect ratio to auto, refresh rate to 90 hertz, VSync off, frame generation enabled, upscale method off, dynamic resolution off, and the anti-alias set to FSR 3.1.0 anti-alias. In the graphic settings, you need to set the texture quality to medium, texture filtering to trilinear, shadow quality low, ambient occlusion SSAO, screen space reflections off, 
and don't even touch ray tracing. Level of detail low, traffic density medium, crowd density medium. If you want, you can set these low so you can have better load times and better frame rates while exploring the open world. Hair quality low, weather particle quality low, depth of field low, bloom effects on, chromatic aberration on, vignity on, motion blur strength three, field of view zero, and film grain strength and sharpness set to 10. Full screen effects on and screen shake on. And that's about all you need to do to run Marvel Spider-Man 2 without any crashes on your Steam Deck. I know it's a lot to take in, but playing a game like Marvel Spider-Man 2 this early before it even shows up on a system like the Nintendo Switch 2 honestly feels like it should be illegal. It plays very well, especially in more closed off locations, which is for the majority where a lot of the sequences of Marvel Spider-Man 2 take place. This game mainly runs exceptionally well. And as you can see, I'm traversing the open world with barely any hitches or stuttering. But yeah, guys, if you have any questions about Marvel Spider-Man 2 on the Steam Deck OLED or the original Steam Deck, let me know in the comments below, and I hope you have a good one. Later.